tell us what's going on. Psych, give me the next slide. <laughs> Happy what? birthday, Jimmy. Oh. I want to sing this guy well happy birthday. Well done. Happy birthday oh. to you. Happy this looks dangerous. He's talking today about open beta, chance to find out what's going on before it's taken off. Um, okay, Vegas Tech open beta is a mailing list. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. <laughs> Because one of the biggest complaints we had was like not enough email. Yeah. You know, that's really what people were worried about. They just felt so lonely. Correct. <laughs> okay, well, uh, once they do sign up, what, what can they expect? You can expect to receive one to two high quality emails a month about launches and projects in the Vegas tech community. Yes, that's what we need. Okay, so the inspiration was from Betaworks, right? And like you got this because it's a good way for a community to really know what's happening like right around them and to get feedback back to the people that really matter. Uh, one of the reasons we did this is because we noticed how amazing it is for Betaworks companies to instantly be able to get 5,000 beta testers um, at once All right. um, just from an email from their mailing list. And we started thinking that Vegas has just as many passionate people in the tech community. And so why not set up a similar mailing list so that we can uh, announce and help other startups and even projects um, get off the ground with a good solid user base. Right, and anybody who's not in Las Vegas and like, or somebody who wants to be more in the downtown project, perfect opportunity, sign up, find out like, you know, what product they might want to be on like a team with and then go and talk to them about it, your ideas and your feedback and your skill set and see if you can make some, some of that happen, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you for buying the beer. Um, we've been drinking it for probably too long now, but real special in my mind, and I appreciate everything you've done for us and continue question, to do for the though. community. One question. Yeah. What happened to your mustache, the famous Jimmy mustache? <laughs> the mustache is still with us in spirit. Call it back. Yeah. <laughs> Was it hot? My mustache <laughs> evaporated the day it hit 118 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> That's a fair answer. All right, we'll buy it, we'll buy it. In spirit, it lives on, though. All right, thanks. Appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Let's talk about the news. News section is in. What's the big news for this week? So Launch Up is having their 10th event coming up really soon. Why don't you tell us about that, Landon? Sure. Uh, we're having our 10th Launch Up. If you don't know about Launch Up, it's a barn raising for startups. We try to get you know, startups that need a little help or maybe don't think they need a little help. Uh, some advice, unsolicited advice, no. Um, and we're having one July 31st, uh, 6.30 p.m. at the Innovation Switch Innovation Center. And it's going to be awesome. We have a couple of keynote speakers, and then we're going to have three startups that present their company, tell us what's working, some challenges they've had, and we try to see if we can figure out how to solve those problems or, or learn from their mistakes. So any of us that don't have a successful business, uh, yeah. you know, go for selfish reasons. And that, that's a great part about launch of it. It's not just like, just show your best side. You really can talk about the problems you're having and then get that feedback to, mm -hmm. yeah, to help so, get through things, right? Absolutely. So. And we, we try to you know, say it over and over again, you know, ask questions, you know, before, after, you know, network, do your thing, try to come away with something. So. Okay. Pretty awesome. Very cool. So how can people buy tickets to this event? That's, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you can't buy tickets, but we'll give you a ticket. It's free event, uh, free food. Um, you, you go to Ticket Cake or launchup.org mm -hmm. slash Vegas or Vegas dot launchup.org, and you can uh, <laughs> sign up through Ticket Cake and get a free ticket. Awesome. Uh, your belly filled for free. and some food. Yeah, free food. Very cool. Good advice. You can't beat that. Free education. And, yeah. Okay, so everybody check out Launchup number 10. That'd be good. I've been to a, been to a number of those, and I found them super useful. So, and it's a national company, too, right? Because we used to have it in is. Utah, and yeah. yeah they started it's in a Utah, great network to be a part of. Chapters, so. and, and most of the people you'll see here are alumni of being on Launchup, so. Awesome. Yeah. 
get that get that top ramen yep. that, yeah, top ramen reward. Don't forget about that. So we, we might do toilet paper this time. <laughs> All right. Well, one of my one of my new favorite companies that has moved here is Record Setter. So I watched you speak down at the Container Park, um, and I had so many thoughts about <laughs> records that I could break. Like it was just like so. You're Calvin and Hobbes. You ever read that comic when you were younger? Yeah, just like just like Calvin Ball style. So tell us um, uh, about Record Setter. Sure. And um, I want to, first off, welcome you by giving you a bottle of champagne. Oh, wow. Thank you. So why don't you pop this bottle and then give okay. us the uh, give us the 60 second pitch. Let everybody know exactly what Record Setter is. Okay, I can, I can try to do both at the same time. So uh, oh, yeah. Record Sorry. Setter, we like to say, is the, uh, the new school home for world records. So our, our belief is sort of that everybody can be the world's best at something. Um, we have we've been around for a little while, based in New York, and we're now here in Vegas. Uh, very proud of that. And we have about <laughs> 25,000 world records from 80 something countries at this point. And you know the, the the rules are very simple: think up something that you're that you're uniquely great at, make it quantifiable and breakable, upload it to the site, recordsetter.com. That's it. Yeah, yeah. No, and I loved your story when you actually you've actually had Guinness Book of World Records when you entered your office, right? And they've been like, <laughs> "What's going on? Like, are you changing the game?" Which you absolutely are. And like, they must be scared to death. I mean, it's. Uh, we hope so. We hope right. so. Because because this is like, as far as I can tell, this is really really perfect business. I mean, it's scalable because you have the crowd that's actually enforcing all the little rules. Right. Yep. Thank you so, very so much. Tell us, yeah, just tell us a little bit more about where you think it's going to go. Like, well, you know, we we from the beginning we've had tons of international competition, and we love seeing you know a 12-year-old girl in Ohio gets beat by a 40-year-old guy in India, and they go back and forth over you know, <laughs> hula hooping while pogo sticking, and, and you know we we are constantly surprised at the types of records that we see and the types of competition that we see, and it just never stops. That's great. Well, you know, there's so many records to break when you get creative. That's what's that's what's so cool about this. So we we had a lot of fun experimenting with uh, records that we could set today with the audience, and <laughs> we came up with uh, something I think that everyone's gonna really enjoy. So first off, I wanna I wanna give you uh, I wanna give a good round of applause for Record Setter. Congratulations and thank, <laughs> thank you, you for coming. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're here to help us enforce this and make sure we do it right because this is the first record I've ever set. Um, but it's on my it's on my Pinterest to do list for life. So okay, you like don't, it from you don't bucket need list. An it's official, good, but it helps. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so here's here's what we're gonna do, guys. We came up with setting the record for the most people in one room that are acting like barnyard animals <laughs> for 30 seconds. So it's gonna get pretty rough in here, but we're all in it together. And this is for the glory. This is for. Do you have an award or anything that you give? You get a badge, uh, like a I have, digital badge I have or anything? Patches and and oh I will, yeah, I will supply yes. patches to everybody here. Uh, they have to come see me later. Because they have to bring them all, but I have one. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so um, I'm going to count down to three, and we're going to go on. But I want if you if you had stuff on your seat, if you guys have a pirate patch on, it's your job to moo like a cow. Okay, sunglasses, any kind of sunglasses on your head, that's uh, cluck like a chicken, right? Because we're doing the whole barnyard thing. And then for the rest of us, everyone else, it's going to be oinking. Okay, so we're going to do pigs. And then does anyone have that big Facebook thumb thing? Anybody? Oh yeah. Oh, who's it? Yeah, okay, you're the rooster. You got, okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, so you got the uh, you got the timer. Okay, we got to do it for 30 seconds. So everybody just and, and start talking to your neighbors, like, but only use your mooing, only your clucking. Right. Like that's what it's about. This is what it can so, be like in a barn. I should note that I, I'm going to take this very seriously. Yeah, no, I we all need yeah. to take it real serious. This is a real award. Okay, this so we'll do it. <laughs> right now. Okay, so 30 seconds. Can I run around? You're around yeah, yeah, run around. Talk to whoever you want. So yeah, we'll talk in three. Two, one, it's barnyard time.
no, I yeah, counted just... 36 people for a brand new world record. We have uh, the most people making barnyard noises in one room for 30 seconds. Congratulations, guys. You are in the book. Worried about how I'm going to sound oinky because yeah, I had the mic right here. So. How's, the, how's the mooing? Mooga, any moo guys out there? Tell me how that was. Is that a lot of responses? Good stuff. Good stuff. Because <laughs> I just thought that moo would just be tough, you know? It seems like it's thick. It's an effort to keep it going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys, let's talk about events. We've got a lot of stuff that's been happening. We have some really cool coming events up. coming up this week. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, first of all, we have the 3D printing introduction with the MakerBot Replicator 2 that is at SynShop, and it's with our epic like expert on 3D printing, which is Andrew Morrow. Now, he has a Replicator 2 himself. So, he's going to take you through from the beginning how to actually get the best prints out of your MakerBot Replicator 2 how to export your files and how to actually get them printing out. So that's going to be really cool. That is on July the 24th at 7 p.m. and it's just $10 and again that's at SynShop. The next event we have is the Downtown Third Farmers Market and that actually happens every Friday. So that will be coming up this Friday on the 26th of July. And the Downtown Farmers Market is showcasing local organic farmers as well as local organic produce in California as well. So it's really cool to get down there and actually support your local produce. If you do live downtown and you, you know, you're not really near a grocery store, this is the perfect thing to get down to. So that's it starts at 9 a.m. and it goes through till 3 p.m. And uh, get in there early because I hear that some of the good produce goes first. The next event we have coming up is Coffee and Code. Now, that's organized by Alex Coleman, who works out of Work in Progress. Coffee and Code is run out of Work in Progress as well. And the next one coming up is July 25th, but it does actually happen every week on a Wednesday. And Work in Progress is on 6th Street. Uh, it's really, really easy to get to. And basically, Coffee and Code is about getting together for an hour between 9.30 and 10.30 a.m. Now, I'm not a morning person. I don't know about yeah, anyone else. That's what I'm ask. Is there, like, any coding in the morning? I, there is no way I would be out there, but for all all of you early birds, it's a really good opportunity for you to get together and talk about code. It can be any language, whatever. It's just wherever it goes. And there'll be some really cool um, local coffee that will be used for that. And sometimes there's donuts, which is really cool. Mm. Donuts is like my favorite food ever. So yeah, maybe I will said, get up some early. Some people are still awake at 9.30 a.m. I mean, they're still cruising <laughs> at that time. Like, get some donuts for it in the sack. I don't know. I got up at 20 past 8 today. There's no way <laughs> <laughs> up for that. But it is very cool, so make sure you get down there. Now, the next event coming up is probably my favorite. I don't know about you, but it's so hot outside that yeah, all I want to do is run yeah. through a sprinkler, right? And coming up is the actually the sprinkler run, which is a 5K run. It's done by the downtown runners. It's actually called the sprinkler sprint, sorry. And it's going to happen on August the 10th, 2013, um, which is this year. Sorry, that was very specific of me. Has ever run through sprinklers? Like you guys ever just done that? Just like, oh, oh, it's, Maybe you used to oh, do that, like that as a kid. Yeah. Well, this is five Justin. kilometers of running through water. <laughs> so they have all of these really cool water zones set up. My favorite thing that I've read about is the slip and slide finish line. So you can actually do a slide through oh, to the finish, so which is super cool. So again, that's going to happen on the 10th of August. And you can get tickets on Ticket Cake for that. Yeah. So yeah, definitely join in. Way to end a race. And I will mention as well that these tickets are tiered. So they do kind of rise up in price closer to the date. So get in now and you'll get the cheapest price possible. But I think at whatever price, this is definitely worth it for sure, especially during summer. And that's all events this week. So we're actually going to be speaking to someone today. His name is Wayne Alexander. And he's going to tell us about Startup Week. Um, yeah, basically Startup Weekend is going to be at the Innovation Center uh, August 9th through the 11th. It's, so it's a place where people can come if they have a, a good idea, uh, but they don't quite have the resources, if you will, to, to get their startup going. So it's a way to come out. It's basically 54 hours. That's the, that's the time frame that you have. It goes over the course of three days. You come out, you bring your idea, you pitch your idea. If it's, if it's liked, you're, you go into your the, the next round, if you will, and people just come out and and really help each other out. It's a way to find the developers. It's a way to find uh, legal help if you need it. It's all these different ways to really get what you need to start, to get your startup going over the course of 54 hours. Um, this year we're, we're going to have, or this time around, it's, it's every few months, so this time around we're going to have uh, Steve Case as a judge from AOL fame, if you will. Oh, yeah. um, so he's going to come out, he's going to judge. It's good to have, have that name attached to it because he's also an entrepreneur at heart, if you will, so he's going to be there to help out people to get their, their startup going. Um, we're going to have some, some judges coming on board. We have uh, uh, Ms. Rudder from Luxor coming around to come out and help and speak. Um, nice. So we have that. Um, I also like to, can't 
can't go without thanking the sponsors. We have Switch on board uh, helping us out okay. again as well. The Las Vegas Chamber um, is pitching in a great amount. We all know Adam Kramer's going to be there helping out as well. Um, from the Las Vegas Chamber and from Jumpstart also. Um, and this year we also partnered with, uh, with B2B. Um, so the winners are going to get three tickets to that. From, that's the big announcement. The wow, round, so that's a big they, deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, a, that's a huge prize to be able to give away. It's just to be able to go to B2B, to be able to connect with all those annual investors and all those venture capitalists. That'll be a great injection to anybody's startup, really. Um, so that'll be fun, fun yeah. for those people. And it's it's mind-blowing how many real startups that are here now came from Startup that Weekend. That is very I mean, true. success rate I mean, is out of control. Champ in the room. I saw yeah. Champ yeah, that's right. Is it Wedgie? Is that where you guys came from, too, originally? Oh. Roger. Rumger, Rumger, Rumger yeah. did, yeah. yeah. Rumger and Launch mm -hmm. Key. Launch yeah. Key came from... from Launch Key was the last one, was it? Uh, no, they weren't the last one. They were okay. a couple ago. I believe. Right. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Room Champ? Yeah, yeah Room Champ. Yeah, of course. The newest one. They just exactly. barely went through. Yeah, that came out of the last the, the last, the last go around. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> Dan, Dan helps with the podcast all the time, and I'm so happy his company's doing well. But that's exactly. another one. I mean, it's just over and over again. Yeah, I hear the story. That so, are, that yeah. born from and even if you're not a programmer, that big thing, too, if you're not a programmer, definitely still the place to get into it. So, yeah. all right, well, Thank you for coming and talking about that. I appreciate you, and uh, we'll definitely be. I bet there'll be a lot of people out there. I'm looking forward to seeing the talent, exactly. the quality of the. And uh, don't forget the website. I'm sorry. If you guys oh, yeah. want to sign up and register, come along. It's uh, lasvegas.startupweekend.org. Okay, lasvegas.startupweekend.org. Yes, sir. Check it out. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. It. Set, we've, already, yeah, we've set some records, we've seen some dogs filming people, and we've had some champagne, but now it's the good stuff. So first off, this is the Executive Vice President of Cloud. This is Jason Mendenhall, if you guys don't know him from Switch. And I wanted to start out by just telling everyone what Switch is, because you've got to get that message through of just how powerful this data center is. So, so Switch is the, at, at the core of it, Switch is the creator of the world-renowned SuperNaps. And the SuperNaps are a facility, a data center environment, a technology ecosystem. And it's the largest and most powerful in the world. It takes uh, the innovations and patents and designs of our CEO and founder, Rob Roy, where he's really uh, changed the game for technology infrastructure and the way that it's housed and the way that it's taken care of and the way that it's secure. We layer in a world-class connectivity network that allows you to connect to the world at the lowest cost. And then we've layered in, which is what I work on a lot, the, uh, uh, the, the world's best cloud computing providers, all under one umbrella. And so this ecosystem, if you think about it, applications, they run on operating systems, they travel over networks that land on servers and storage that sit somewhere. Right. And we're that whole story. And it's all right there for the world's largest enterprises. So from healthcare to financial services to um, e-commerce to big data to gaming to you name it, they're all housed in our environment taking advantage of it. They're here and right in Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay, so, so wow me with some of the numbers. Just like throw gigahertz at me, like watts at me. Like tell me how powerful this so is. So one, two, three. No, I, uh, <laughs> I thought that didn't wow you. With that was, those were wow. I was wowed. You yeah. were wowed? Yeah, yeah I, I, was I can wild. count to 10. <laughs> I can get to 10. No, so you think think about some of the things that are going on in our environment. Um, it's a 2.2 million square foot data center environment, which makes it the second largest in the world. The only, lar the only one larger is a project in China that actually hasn't got off the ground. We're number two, and then number three is the NSA facility in Salt Lake that's right. got so much news about it. It's only half our size. Yeah, that thing's got nothing on you. Yeah, exactly. You'll it's, stock them. You know it's what peanuts. I mean? Yeah, we're going to we'll we're gonna yeah. track the NSA, right? That's how we roll, right? That's how we roll at Switch. Um, um, the uh, there under roof we we don't really know total details, but under under our roof we expect there's probably about 375 petabytes of actual raw storage. Um, that's a significant amount of data. Uh, the largest single. Yeah, well, that's a thousand terabytes per petabyte. Yeah, gigabyte, terabyte, yeah, yeah. petabyte. Okay. So there's thousand twenty-four terabytes in a yeah, petabyte. That's, that's if you took all the written works of mankind in every language, you put them on a single database. Yeah. That's just fifty petabytes. So this is basically yeah. eight times that amount, all under one roof. And there's probably over $7 billion worth of gear under the building. Yeah, that is insane. How much electricity? Uh, a lot. 
Yeah, lots and lots. Yeah, yeah, you have a lot of patents on the cooling system and everything. Yeah, too, right? That's when, kind of when Rob started the company, when, you know, as the starter, one thing about working with Rob, which is great uh, as an entrepreneur myself and, and, and working with him as the founder of the company, he's been able to innovate and change the industry. And, and we've had leaders around the world that have traveled the world, looked at facilities all over the data center, and they come in and they go, Rob, you are 15 years ahead of your time in what you've done. So he's got 218 patents and designs on the data center as a whole. And, and that's a game changer for our, the companies that we're dealing with. I mean, we're dealing with the Fortune 100 on many cases. And the great thing is, is it's flexible enough that not, not only are the Fortune 100 in there, but the smallest companies are in there as right. well. We work with startups here locally where we're helping them get on these cloud computing platforms. And now think about that. As a starting company, you're now operating in the same environment that eBay is operating yeah, well, in. You know, and the one thing I didn't want to be wowed by was really the huge clients. Like, I wanted to hear what you're doing for startups. Because the most important thing for this audience would really be how could they, you know, I mean, these teams may be $500,000 or less, maybe just nothing, and they're trying to get it off the ground. Like, how can they take advantage of having this facility so close? Uh, one of, the, one of the ways that we've helped a lot of startups with today, and, and what's one of the things I do, I'll spend some time with them, sit down, try and understand what they're doing, and then help them match with the right providers in the data center. So in that cloud ubiquitous business exchange, we call it Cube, we've got over 40 cloud providers. And there are alternatives to Amazon. Amazon's great, but it, it, it can only take you so far. And it, it's not really that enterprise class cloud computing that a lot of companies are look, looking for. We've got those in our environment, and so we'll spend time with them and help them, and in many cases, some of them have incubator programs for startups. Uh, some of them have just extremely low cost. So for, you know, you, you just reduce your coffee intake by one cup a day and you can now have instances on a cloud, right? right I mean, it's right. those types of solutions. And so now you're in that environment with world-class connectivity, world-class cloud computing, and, and world-class resources. It sounds right. like we lost somebody. No, yeah. Well, it's a few people die every episode. It's, <laughs> well, that's it's cool. pretty common. Well, like, that's all right. pretty boring. Yeah, you know? we need more tasers. <laughs> <laughs> we need more tasers. That's what I've been saying. I to know. Them, we right? just need That's to bring ta been... tasers here. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be a good idea. Okay, so well, let's talk about uh, like what can we look forward to in the future as far as cloud computing going, and specifically if people have ideas like where the where the world's going. If I can help them try to funnel through you, what cloud computing is going to be in five or ten years, which I know is always impossible, but like what what could they maybe be thinking about as far as companies that might take over the world? Well, I, I think it's. You know, one of the things that's interesting about our environment is where we are, is this is where the rubber meets the road. And actually, I think that's one of the un unique traits is Las Vegas. There's there's some places where you've got, yeah, P you yeah. know, there's PhDs kind of researching things in a back room, and then some little magic thing comes out of it, but that guy can never take it and actually do something real with it. Right. What we've got in Las Vegas that's really neat, unique is where a lot of those innovations, we a lot of the people here understand how those applications work. And so I think where, where application of real technology and the technology to empower it come together. That's what's actually present here in Las Vegas. And so I think when we look down the road, you look at things like gathering data about information and you think about marrying that with healthcare. Uh, and you think about the, the financial service, and there's a lot of talk about big data, but going beyond the social aspect of big data and getting into the relevant information that corporations own, that individuals own, that companies own about people. I can tell you I'm sitting with some of the leaders in the world that are figuring out how this is going to work, and they're going, well, our PhDs figured no, this out, so weird. Yeah. but we don't know how to do it. Yeah. And I think that's the difference in Vegas. We got a lot of people who actually go, okay, I understand what you've put together, but I'll create the platform that'll right. let you do but it. But like if AI is really going to take over, it's coming out of Supernet. You know, well, it'll probably. just sort of like be alive one day. Well, we already have it. Like, we just yeah, haven't released it yet. <laughs> I'm, sure. So. I'm, sure, I'm sure you're simulating brains in there. What about quantum computing? You guys scared? Uh, get no. Somebody in their laptop going to get you? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, our customers protect themselves, and they do what's necessary in their environment. We provide the physical part of that cybersecurity that's extremely important. But our customers protect themselves and and as a general whole when you look at uh, you know kind of targets in the world data centers aren't a target um, yeah. they're they're the community they're, they're the power of the communication network for them and the last thing you want to do in any type of situation is ruin your communication network yeah. so th I think I think I think we're in a unique spot and, and on top of that we have the physical security protections to make sure that it's the right place for everybody that's why people are there I mean, it, yeah. it's the right environment. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, and the, I mean, if anyone hasn't toured, people can tour it, right? Yeah, they like, can. If yeah. you haven't toured this place, like it's the Hummers, it's the guys with guns, it's the like total Tron experience. It is so fun. Like, that's like one of the craziest. So 
so my, I'll ever. tell you a funny story. The first, my, the first, because you, when kind of giving the tour, it's a big deal. There's a lot yeah. of information, and so the first one I ever gave was to my mom. And I, I've had a long experience in uh, product marketing for uh, technology companies, and I've always that was my background before I came here. And I always would call my mom and do the mom test, because if I could explain it to my mom, and then she went, "Oh, I think I get that," then I knew that the rest yeah. of the world would get it. So I, I brought my mom on a tour, and we walk her through it, and she goes. This is like technology Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, Do you like, still put people in the room with that huge fan? They almost feels like oh, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, that was, that was a little show off you, but I liked it. No, there's a I reason. There, no, there's a reason for that. There's actually a reason for that. What we're trying to, because the important part of that is some of those cooling technologies. But you know what my mom's comment was after we did all that? What? She goes, can I get one of those air conditioners for my house? And I need the sticky pads for my <laughs> door. And I'm like, mom, seriously? A few billion dollars worth of we showed yeah. you the math. I showed you some of the most innovative technology platforms in the world, and all you wanted was an air conditioner and a floor <laughs> Pad. I mean, goes, come on. Comes back. All right, so I have a couple more questions, but first I want to see where Cuz is. And who's closest to this dog? Cuz cam time, because we've got something to give away from Switch. Who, who had, you guys got to self police. Someone's got to like, pick him up. Like, whose hand was really petting Cuz at the time? Okay. All right, well, we got a uh, gift bag for you. I think you got, uh, oh, yeah. A Switch bag. Yeah. <laughs> we got the dog. The dog knows good, you know. So. What kind of good is. <laughs> Congrats, yeah. Awesome. Finally rewarded for petting a dog. And a pass for the co-working space? <laughs> okay. Awesome. That's a good thing. So anyways, we should talk about that, because that's where we actually have our office, too. But the innovation co-working space yeah. is separate from the Switch data center. So talk about that's really where a lot of these um, events are happening and like a good place for entrepreneurs to come. It's, so. Yeah, it's the Rob Roy Innovation Center, and it's, it's really a gift when you, uh, you – we, we've been really successful. Um, when Rob founded the company back in 2000, it was founded with Vegas money, Vegas people, all the things that everyone said could never happen, right? right? There's no money in Vegas, there's no talent in Vegas, blah, blah, blah. Well, we've turned into a huge success. The town's been great to us. And now um, we feel a responsibility to give back to the community. And, and Rob's um, method of doing that is the Innovation Center. It is a gift back to the community. It's really a technology di uh, diversification gateway. Yeah. And, I, and, and I use the term gateway in a real way because it's not just one or two things that's happening there. Like twice tonight we've talked about Startup Weekend and Launch of Las Vegas that are occurring out of there. It's co-working space for people. We've brought the Governor's Office of Economic Development, the Las Vegas Global Economic Authority, uh, the LVGEA as they're called now, and uh, several other groups. Also that these things that cause economic diversification and can spur growth, they're all located in one facility. And, and that, you know, it, in Rob's vision, has been let's let's innovate through collaboration and if we get everybody together and we create an environment for these things to happen then it becomes real. Yeah, it's the collision mentality. So, yeah. It's a lot of it down here too. So um, that's all the questions I have for you. But I want to say thanks for coming out and um, letting everybody know about it because you know part part of it is even though I didn't go to like a whole family life and stuff like you're you're a good person and a lot of the people out there have been incredibly just welcoming. Like well, I can just you. tell like the, the vibe that there is at the Innovation Center is, is legitimate and I think that it's something everybody should know about. So. Awesome. Well, All thanks right. for having Thank me. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate yep. it. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. All right. Okay, to close out the show, we have Porter Haney. Now, Porter, what is your Twitter handle? At uh, Porter Haney. And I got one question for you. Out of all the animals in the world, which is the largest animal that you think you could take on in hand-to-hand -hand combat? <laughs> oh, that's a tough question, but I think, you know, a polar bear. <laughs> and just continuing on our Animal Sounds theme tonight, what, polar bear. what is your best impression of what a polar bear sounds like? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and on that note, thanks for watching the podcast. We'll see all you right, thank you guys for coming out. <laughs> Like a flashback, Vegas Tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.